Yeah. yeah, that's fine, yeah. Yeah. Get him in there. Get him in there. We'll leave the questioning to you guys. We'll just medically look at it and go from that way. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm gonna I'm gonna check his we're gonna stand up. You want some hand? Do you want to hand that to him? All right, ready? One, two, three, three. Stand tall, Tim. Yeah, okay. I'll have a good one. I'll have a good one. I'll have a good one. Oh. I've just obviously, because I've been listening to what's been said, I've written down what you said to me, what's been said, right? When we were first got here, when I first saw you outside, you were asked by the paramedics what was happening. You said something to me, so I was having an affair with her, she got me to meet her here, she was going to tell my wife. Um, and then just now, when you've given the paramedic a bit more of the details, but female arrived. Right there. Sorry. Yeah. The female arrived after me and jumped in my car. She was so angry. She was going to tell my wife we were having an affair for years. She was going through my phone. I don't remember what happened. She was going through my phone. I think she told my wife I was going to drive off and kill myself. The wounds were caused by a pen knife in my car. I've had it for years. don't remember what happened. Just felt it go in, I think, three times. You're happy, that's basically what you've said to the paramedic. Obviously, not worth a word if I can get you to sign your life away for us there, please. No. All right, Tim, as you said, you're going to get arrested at the moment. I'm arresting you on suspicion of attempted murder. You don't have to say anything to me. I'm just going to make my question. Somebody there at Ryan and Court. Anything you do say may be given as evidence, okay? Obviously, we're going to let paramedics take you down to, to hospital, get you all checked out first. And obviously, you know the process from there, all right? Yeah. yeah. I'm so sorry. That's all right. That's fine. We'll get, the, get, you down to, we'll get you down to the hospital so we can get you all checked out and then we can do it from there, all right? Yeah. In the car where police officer strangled his lover brought to murder trial. News recap for October 14, 2020. Reports by the Daily Mail, UK. We've been having an affair for years. She was going to tell my wife. Moment bloodied and sobbing married police officer broke down in front of paramedics after he strangled his lover to death in car. This is the moment a married police officer accused of murdering his lover breaks down in front of paramedics shortly after her death. PC Timothy Bremer is on trial over the killing of nurse Claire Perry a mother of two, in a grey Citroen C1 after she threatened to reveal their 10-year affair to his wife Martha. Bodycam footage shown to jurors and released today shows the topless Dorset police officer sat on the ground at a pub car park, sobbing and surrounded by emergency crews. The inconsolable Bremer is then questioned in the back of an ambulance, having allegedly stabbed himself in the arm with a penknife. The court was told today how he insisted, I'm a good man, and asked, what's my mother going to say? in the aftermath of the tragedy. He also told paramedics, I've fucked up, and, God, she's got kids. In the video, when he is told he is going to be arrested, Bremer breaks down again and says, I'm so sorry. Paramedics treating Mrs. Perry said they recognized the hospital nurse as they used to socialize with her while police officers immediately recognized Bremer as he lay bleeding by the roadside. CCTV footage released today shows the Citroen driving into the car park before Bremer later walks away and sits down alone by the entrance. The medics who battled to save Mrs. Perry managed to get her back, temporarily, the court heard. Jurors at Salisbury Crown Court in Wiltshire were shown footage this morning which showed an inconsolable Bremer crying as he was asked about what happened. In the clip, Bremer, who is topless, has a visibly injured left arm, with blood over his shorts as paramedics inspect him for more injuries. When asked what had happened, sobbing Bremer replied, We've been having an affair for years. She forced me to meet her, she was going to tell my wife, I was going to lose my boy. I met her here, she was going through my phone. She was going to tell my wife. In the back of an ambulance, Bremer continues, she wouldn't get out of the car, I just wanted to go and kill myself. He later can be heard exclaiming, oh my god, as he sobs in the ambulance. It was heard he told a paramedic, what's my mother going to say, and repeatedly told them, she was so, so angry. Footage taken in hospital showed Bremer saying, I'm a good man, I think she stabbed me, and talking of his desire to, get a piece of rope, and take his own life. 
Meanwhile, the clip released today shows an exchange between Bremer and an officer in the back of an ambulance. The officer says, I've written down what you've said to me. When we first got here, when I first saw you outside, you were asked by the paramedics what was happening. You said something similar to, I was having an affair with her, she got me to meet her here. She was going to tell my wife. The female arrived after me and jumped in my car. She was so angry. She was going to tell my wife we were having an affair for years. She was going through my phone, I don't remember what happened. I think she told my wife. I was going to drive off and kill myself. The wounds were caused by a pen knife in my car, I've had it for years. I don't remember what happened. I just felt it go in, I think three times. You're happy that's basically what you said for the paramedic? Obviously not word for word. If I can get you to sign there for us, please. All right Tim, you're going to get arrested. At the moment I'm arresting you on suspicion of attempted murder. You do not have to say anything, but it may harm your defense if you do not mention when questioned something which you later rely on in court. Anything you do say may be given in evidence. Okay, we're going to let paramedics take you down to hospital get you all checked out first, and obviously you know the process from there, all right. Sobbing hysterically, Bremer replies, yeah, I'm so sorry. Paramedic Samer al kateb giving evidence through a statement, said Bremer appeared to be in a state of shock at the scene. He added, I remember at one point I heard the man say, I fucked it, or, I fucked it up, but I didn't hear any other comments from him. Mr. al kateb said Mrs. Perry had dried blood across her face and added, I noticed more discoloring around her neck, there was a band of pale around her neck. Paramedic James Best said after finding Mrs. Perry's NHS ID card he realized he knew her. Describing her position within the car, he said, it looked as if someone had fallen asleep with their head against the door and then the door had been opened. She had blue lips, it was obvious to me she was not breathing. I checked her for a pulse and she didn't have one. I found her NHS card and realized it was Claire. I knew Claire through the job as historically we used to socialize but that was a long time ago. Knowing that people at the hospital would know her I contacted the liaison team. Paramedic George Fiddler said Bremer said, don't let me die. His colleague Thomas Hull, who treated Mrs. Perry, said, a few times we managed to get her back but her pulse was very slow and weak. Dorset Police PC Martin Brown, who responded to the scene, told how he realized the incident involved his colleague Bremer. He said, I said to his colleague, doesn't that guy look like Tim Bremer? and as I approached it looked more like Tim. James Best, who was first at the scene, said he saw Bremer but was called over by a man to Mrs. Perry who was lying half out of the citron. He said, as I approached I saw a female laying half in half out of the citron. Her head was on the ground but her body was more in the car, her feet were in the driver's footwell. It looked almost as if someone had fallen asleep leaning on the door and it had then been opened. She had fallen half out of the car with her face on the ground. She had blue lips and it was obvious to me she was not breathing. I checked her for a pulse. She did not have one. He said that his colleagues carried out chest compressions and added that he recognized Mrs. Perry when he found her NHS ID card. I know Claire through the job because we used to socialize, but that was a long time ago, Mr. Best said. Knowing that other people at the Royal Bournemouth Hospital would know her, I contacted the ambulance liaison so they could put the plans in place. Colleague Thomas Hull said that he saw a red band mark across Mrs. Perry's throat and said he carried out chest compressions. He said, a few times we managed to get her back, her pulse was very slow and it was very weak. We got her pulse back enough to consider moving her so we got her into the ambulance. Mrs. Perry, 41, was taken to the Royal Bournemouth where she died the following day. A post-mortem examination concluded the cause of death was a brain injury caused by compression of the neck. Martin Brown, a police officer who attended the scene, said, I looked at Tim and asked what had happened, he said, I can't remember, before crying hysterically. The jury was shown police body-worn video footage which shows Bremer sitting in shorts with a top and with blood visible on his body. He is seen sobbing and when asked what had happened, he says, I have been having an affair for years, she was going to tell my wife, I am afraid I am going to lose my boy, so I met her here. She told my wife, I don't remember the rest. Bremer, of Hordle, Hampshire, 
who at the time of the incident was seconded to the National Police Air Service based at Bournemouth Airport, denies murder but has pleaded guilty to manslaughter. Click the link below to read the related article and watch the video coverage. Yeah, that's fine, yeah. Yeah. Get him in there. We'll leave the question to you guys. We'll just medically look at it and go from that way. Yeah, yeah, no problem. I'm gonna um I'm gonna check these. We're gonna stand up. Ready? One, two, three, three. Stand tall, Tim. Yeah, okay. I'll have to leave that. Leave it there. Top. Oh. I've just obviously because I've been listening to what's been said. I've written down what you said to me, what's been said, right? When we were first got here, when I first saw you outside, you were asked by the paramedics what was happening. You said something to them, so I was having an affair with her, she got me to meet her here. She was going to tell my wife. Um, and then just now, when you've given the paramedic a bit more of the details, but female arrived. You're right there. Sorry. Yeah. The female arrived after me and jumped in my car. She was so angry. She was going to tell my wife we were having an affair for years. She was going through my phone. I don't remember what happened. She was going through my phone. I think she told my wife I was going to drive off and kill myself. The wounds were caused by a pen knife in my car. I've had it for years. Don't remember what happened. Just felt it go in, I think, three times. You're happy, that's basically what you've said to the paramedic. Obviously, not worth a word if I can get you to sign your life away for us there, please. No. All right, Tim, as you said, you're going to get arrested at the moment. I'm arresting you on suspicion of attempted murder. You don't have to say anything, but it may, I'm just mentioning that makes my question. So, be there at Ryan and Court. Anything you do, so maybe give them evidence, okay? Obviously, we're going to let the paramedics take you down to, to hospital, get you all checked out first. And obviously, you know the process from there, all right? <laughs> yeah. I'm so sorry. That's all right. <gasps> That's fine. We'll get, the, get, you down to, get you down to the hospital so we can get you all checked out and then we can do it from there, all right? 